Hey guys, this is Jack from FPV Academy in partnership with Lumineer and GetFPV. Now in this video we'll be going over the basics of throttle control, the science behind it, how you can improve your throttle control and how you can practice it in the liftoff FPV simulator. Before we start this video, let's quickly touch on three points. In the description below you will find three different links. If you don't have a quadcopter yet and you want to start flying FPV, there's a link that will take you to the exact quadcopter that I am flying in these videos. Now if you have a quad and you want to do the lessons with the exact same gates and flags as I do, then there's a link to that too. Finally, if you need any help with your flying, whether it's building your quadcopter or you need some mentorship on your actual flying, I offer these services too through the FPV Academy Pilot Support Program. You can find some more info on this in the description. So let's get right into it. Firstly, when it comes to throttle control, it's important to understand when to apply more throttle and when to ease off of it. So let's look at a few examples. The most obvious form of throttle control is when you are pitching your quad forward. The more you pitch your quad forward, the more throttle you need to apply to maintain the same height. Now, as you pitch your quad up, the slower you start to fly forward and the less throttle you need to input to keep the quad at the same height. Now the biggest mistake people make with throttle control is when they turn to go around corners. When you start banking around corners or any other time, you would most likely input some roll and you then need to apply some more throttle. Now the faster you fly around corners, the more roll you input around those corners and the more throttle you need to apply as well. Now with that said, let's look at another example. I'm flying my quad high in the air and I'm keeping my throttle at the same position. I'm not applying any more throttle or easing off of it. It's in the exact same position. So what I'm doing here is only apply inputs in your pitch and roll. So let's look at the first input. As I add more roll, my quad starts losing altitude. But as soon as I start to ease off of it, it gains altitude again. Now when I'm moving forward, I'm pitching my quad down a little more and you'll notice that I'm starting to lose height again. So to counter that, I either need to add more throttle, which I'm not going to do now, or I need to pitch it back a little more. When I pitch it back too much though, you'll see I start to gain some altitude. So again, I either need to pitch it more forward or lower my throttle to cancel it out. Now finally, when it comes to yaw, it becomes a little more complicated. Theoretically, yaw shouldn't affect your height at all, since it yaws the motors around the center point of the quad, and so it doesn't create or lose any lift. We can go a lot deeper into this, but then it becomes very complicated. So all you have to know for now is that your input doesn't really affect your throttle control a lot at all. So now that you know the basics behind throttle control, let's do a few exercises to practice this skill. Firstly, you want to fly as close to the ground as possible, doing a few slow turns alternating from left to right. Now what I did here was apply no throttle control around these corners just to show you what would happen if you didn't do this. If I didn't save the quad at the last second, I would have very easily crashed into the ground. Now this is the right way to do it. Stay as close to the ground as you possibly can or whatever you are most comfortable with. If you do touch the ground, that is fine too. The chances of damaging your quad is very unlikely unless you are flying over a solid surface. Next, you want to move on to this exercise. Now instead of doing slow turns all over the field, you want to quickly accelerate in a straight line and then quickly do a 180 degree turn, facing into the opposite direction whilst keeping your quad at the same height or as low to the ground as possible. Keep doing this until you're able to fly an entire battery flawlessly without gaining or losing height or touching the ground. Finally, let's build a basic core so that you can practice alternating your turns and dialing in your throttle control. For this course, you would only need four flags. Basically, just place them about 50 feet apart from each other in a square and start weaving around them in any sequence that you like as slow as possible to the ground. There's no specific way that you want to fly this track, but you just want to alternate your turns left and right, making sure you turn more or less the same amounts and just flying around the flags as low as possible. Now just keep flying around these flags, trying to keep your quad at least 6 feet throughout the entire time before you can move on to the next lessons. Now once you're able to do this flawlessly, this is where the fun really begins. There's a good chance you're hooked into flying FPV now and there is no turning back. So welcome to the world of FPV. Now as always, let's see how we can practice this in the liftoff FPV simulator before we go out and fly this in real life. The best way to practice throttle control is definitely with a ceiling above you. This forces you to keep your quad low. So first, let's just practice and learn to fly on the track minus two. When I started flying, it took me six hours to be able to fly my first circuit on minus two, so it will take you a long time to get this right. This is an extremely important skill though, so I would definitely recommend you keep going at it until you're finally able to fly a circuit. Even if it takes you 15 hours to get this right, just practice and practice and practice. Trust me on this. Once you're finally able to fly around without crashing into the ceilings or poles, you then want to practice the following exercise. 
fly straight forward as fast as you possibly can. And then just before you're going to hit a wall, do a 180 and fly back in the opposite direction to the next wall. Once you reach that wall, do the same thing. This is also very difficult, especially as you start flying faster. Try and challenge yourself to get to the point where you can do this at full throttle going towards the wall. This is extremely difficult, but it will be an immense help in throttle control. Simply by flying with a ceiling above your head, you will automatically improve your throttle skills. Just keep flying around this track until you don't crash into anything after two minutes of flying. Now thanks a lot for sticking around through this entire video. If you enjoyed it and learned a lot, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. FPV Academy, in partnership with GetFPV and Lumineer, will be bringing out tons of videos that'll help you become a better FPV pilot. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This is Jack, signing off.